We're getting back on track here with Catherine and Emily, but as you know, we won't stay there for long because this is the Going Off Track podcast. Hello, hello, and welcome back to the Going Off Track podcast. I'm Catherine, that's Emily, and we are back for our, I think this is our third episode of From the DMs. Um, And this is something that we discuss ad nauseum all of the time in our DMs and in episodes as well. And if you don't know where we're going, uh, we're going to try to fix the sprint format. You're or welcome. I also make maybe make it worse, but we we might we, we might this might be the episode where we two random Formula One fans from the United States or United States slash Argentina are gonna fix what is wrong with Formula One right now, or just one of the many things about how much we hate them and what they might be able to do to make them suck less. But you know yeah. we talk about these every single. It seems like every single race recap and uh, review ep- uh, episode that we do it seems like we just talk about sprints a lot so we're just dedicating an entire episode to them yeah so. and and I mean also we're recording this you know as this is one of our more standalone episodes we're recording this after the back-to-back sprint weekends in right. China and Miami which as as we have discussed China as exciting as it was should never have been a sprint weekend because they hadn't driven there in in five years and the only reason why that sprint was exciting was because it rained in SQ3 like once once Max got through the competition you know nine laps in that race was over um but yeah so as you may or may not remember from the DMs is our series where we inflict conversations and discussions that we have in our DMs to you the greater audience so that we can continue discussing these things and also, we're discussing this episode so we can stop referring you to the Qatar 2023 uh, recap where we really went in on how much we dislike the sprint format. And we're just going to give you this one place where you can just one stop shop it of why we have a problem with the sprints and how we can maybe fix them. I'd love to say this is going to be our one stop shop to our sprint reference point. However, I feel like we're going to have to do a we will fix the sprint format episode every single season until they get it right. <laughs> exactly. And th- the other thing that you pointed out before we started recording is sprints are actually very new to Formula yeah. One. They were they were introduced the year that I got into Formula One that I and I had no concept of it at the time um, as a quote, a bid to pack more spectacle into racing weekends with a format that would have drivers go flat out from lights out to the checkered flag. And if you think that sounds stupid, it does. <laughs> what copy are you re- reading right now? <laughs> I, I, I'm, pr- I'm pretty sure I pulled that from Formula One.com. Or yes. something. I, it was probably something written by somebody directed by Stefano Domenicali, who <laughs> is the right. CEO of Formula One. Um, Stefano obviously is like big into the sprint formats. He wants all the sprint formats all the time. He also wants 6,000 race weekends in one year, um, which, you know, logical. There's only, there's only 52 <laughs> weeks in a year and three months of those weeks has to be, you know, winter vacation. Uh, but you know, we can cram in more race weekends during the week or something, I guess. I don't know. It can be like one of those nonstop things. Hey, I would never say no to more race weekends, but still having 24 races on the, on the schedule this season seems like a lot. It's been, you know, 23, 22 last few years with COVID and races getting canceled, things like that. Um, so I, this I this could be the season. first year of actually having the twenty four scheduled races all ha- happen. Yeah. Ooh, so yeah, like Catherine said, just to kind of take a step back from where we are and how we got there on sprints, um, started in twenty twenty one. So, of all of the formats that we have out there now, I think this might be the best that we've had. Maybe. I don't know if you agree with me there or not, Catherine, but to me, the 2021 season is like, if it's not broke, don't fix it. And they're like, oh, it's working well. Let's try something new. Let's Um, make it worse. (laughs) So how race weekends worked in 2021, Friday was FP1 and then sprint quality. Saturday was FP2 and then the sprint. And then the sprint set the grid for Sunday. So there was no true qualifying for the race on Sunday because that qualifying came out of the sprint um, final um, standings. This means that the sprint means something. 
Yeah. What a novel concept. Yeah, because I, I really feel like what we have right now is we we have, you know, two separate races in one weekend. And obviously we're having a lot of action, especially with like the current format, which we'll, we'll talk a little bit more in depth about that. But I really like that what you do in the sprint matters to the Grand Prix um, because right. it, it gives you that it gives you the stakes that we don't have right now. And a lot of the criticism that we get from a number of drivers is and, and even a number of, of you know commentators and presenters is, you know, everybody's going to be super careful in the sprint right now because you have a Grand Prix to prepare for. But they're going to yeah. be less careful if they're like, oh, well, I, you know, didn't qualify great in the sprint. I'm going to have to overtake as many cars as I can so that I have a good starting position for Sunday and then hopefully put me in the best position possible to be successful on Sunday. Right. And this also, you know, adds a little bit more entertainment value because what if something happens to you in the sprint and then you have to really drive hard on Sunday? It's going to give you more of a mixed grid maybe than what we're currently seeing where it's like constantly Red Bulls and... Uh, Ferrari, McLaren now up at the yeah. top. And instead of just those typically being the top six, not every single weekend, but generally, let's just say, it's going to give you a different grid because you do have DNFs. You do have people crashing. You do have people getting time penalties. You do have people, you know, not racing as well as they thought they would to set the grid for Sunday. I think this truly was a look at how can we make the racing, the best racing we can get. And I think that's the viewpoint that they took when they started the, the sprint race format in 2021. They said, how can we get the best racing out of these drivers for sprint weekends? And I think this is what they came up with. And I think that's the product that we got in 2021. Yeah. And then that's something that we don't have anymore. And it's, right. we just have two separate events that you know, even the, the scoring, it doesn't really lead to, you know, a lot of, you know, wanting to, to make effort. Obviously they want to, you know, make effort and win. Um, but you know, you only get eight points for first and you only get one point for eighth and, you know, even the likes of Lando and Oscar, like they don't treat the sprint as real wins because they're not real Grand Prix wins. Um, and, you know, Oscar won in Qatar, in 2023 reference um and it's still it's like well he won the the you know really short fast race and that you know okay cool and he got a little cute little plaque thing um and that was really it yeah it's i mean yeah i think we've moved away from trying to get the best racing because like if you can only get eight points for first place but like something drastic happens let's say you lose a chassis right and then you're out Williams. for for potential bigger points for getting P4 in the actual race. And so I think the way that it's set up currently just it's it's moved it's been a drastic departure from the 2021 format. Yeah, exactly. Which the, the one thing I will say is the tweak that they made for 2022, I'm glad they got rid of. Oh, and it's horrible. It, well, and you and I, we we both talked before we started recording about how we had no concept of this. I I watched almost every race of the 2022 season. I had no concept of this tweak where basically it was the same format as 2021, except the driver who got pole in qualifying also got pole in the race regardless of where they finished in the sprint. Yeah, and to clarify, that would be the sprint qualifying, not race qualifying. So, like, right, because there was only on one Friday, qualifying session on the weekend. On Friday, you get pole for the sprint, and then you have the sprint on Saturday. And so you you do terrible, right? So you end up P eleven. You don't start in P eleven. You start in P one because you got the pole on Friday. Like that to me doesn't make. I don't know why they would do that. I mean, I guess because they want to encourage people to get pole, but then. Like, nothing comes from it. But you're still – like, I I don't even remember, you know – I don't remember the sprints that, that season. I also don't really remember who was who was getting pole, um, though it was probably Max at the time if we're talking 2022. Or it could have been Charles, and Max just converted all of Charles's poles to win because that, wait a, you know, wait would always – in there, Catherine. I, I mean, it's 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 an unfortunate fact in the career of Charles Leclerc is that he gets pole and Max wins the race. Um, but I, I just – I hate it. I hate yeah. it so much. It's dumb. But, but I don't hate it 
as much as I hate 2023. Oh my god, 2023 was awful. And... 2023, Friday, you have FP1 and then Grand Prix Quali. And then you have the Sprint Shootout. And then you have the Sprint Race. And then you have the Grand Prix. So, so, like, we do have two separate races here. Because you qualify for Sunday on Friday after one FP1 race. And Park Ferme went into effect. So if anything happened... You're screwed. SOL for the race... And then Saturday was just all sprint, nothing to do with the actual race. And then Sunday was the actual Grand Prix. Yeah. And it it was, it was, it just, it wasn't good. And the other problem is like, nobody knew what to call the sprint qualifying session. They're like, it's sprint qualifying. It's a sprint shootout. It's qualifying. We don't know what we're calling things. And it just like, it was added another layer of like, this is just a clown show. And we also just didn't get good racing in what, what four of the six sprint races um you know through for throughout that entire season most the one that most notably comes to mind for me other than Qatar is Baku because Baku we had a, a good you know sprint street race and the Grand Prix was just boring as hell I will argue that we had a good Brazil Brazil. Right, right. Brazil was was one of the the good whole weekends, and that that kind of goes into this idea of like sprint races can be good, I think, on shorter tracks. Yeah, I agree. I I, 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 I don't that before too. Yeah, I just I just don't think that longer tracks and we have some really long tracks are conducive to good sprint racing, no. which is why when we were talking about sprints. In an episode earlier this season, we kind of threw out the idea of should Monaco be a sprint? Because Monaco is one of the shortest tracks on the calendar. And that could cause some chaos. I'm still here for it. And I'm still here for it. It never will be a sprint. And I it it could go one of two ways, right? Because you can have the most entertaining race ever because it's Monaco, or it could be super boring and your starting grid is your ending grid because it's so impossible to pass in Monaco. Right. But I think it would only work if and only if that sprint had the 2021 format. Yes. Correct. Like in the current format we have, there's not a, the risk to reward there is not at a level where we would get all out racing. Like my, right. my thoughts on sprints in general is we've moved away from how can we get the best racing all weekend long to how can we get the most eyes and make a super entertaining product to where we're capturing viewers for three full days versus, you know, maybe one and a half days. So I think it's really moved towards, which it's a business, I understand, but it's moved towards the consumer product of we want to get more viewers, more entertainment for longer than like getting the best product out of the weekend. Right. Which... Formula One has existed. This is, we're in season 74. We don't need gimmicks in motorsport to make it more exciting, in my opinion. I, and I, I do think that the sprint is, is a lot of a gimmick. Um, obviously we have been very fortunate to have two good sprint weekends in China and Miami this season in 2024 with the current format, which is on Friday, you have FP one and the sprint shootout Saturday, you have the sprint and then you go into grand prix qualifying. And then Sunday you have the grand prix. This format is better. I will, you know, it is, yeah. it is a departure from 2023 and I'm totally here for it. It's a lot better. Obviously, you know, I, I don't think that we really can, can give a determination on if the sprints are actually good now after two sprint races and two wildly different types of track. Um, and we, we need to, to get through the rest of the season. And so like, I'm, I'm a little bit on the fence, um, but we have been fortunate to have, good racing. And then of course, you know, in Miami, we got very lucky with, you know, Verstappen taking damage and, you know, Kevin Magnuson being a human wrecking ball so that Lando Norris could win, um, which still excited about that. Um, But I just, I don't really, I just don't know about it yet. I, I will say though, I think they've really succeeded on creating a entertaining product to really grasp you all weekend. Cause I think I've, I mean, I've told you this multiple times and I know I've, I've DM'd you that I was so focused all weekend on the Miami Grand Prix. 
like I had like I watched and maybe it's also the time zone thing that helped so maybe if yeah. if this was in a different time zone maybe that'd be different but because the time zone worked for you know where we are in the world like I constantly found myself planning everything th- th- that weekend around Miami and it was super entertaining so like Formula One did succeed for me as a viewer but do I think that the like qualifying session for the Grand Prix could have been better absolutely oh it was that was a clown show but here so here's where I think we're gonna run into a problem with the 2024 format and that is the time slot for 2024 the sprint race is during FP3 FP3 is a um a time that I don't usually watch uh, live, especially, especially when we're in Europe, because that's like two or three o'clock in the morning for me. Right. So if you're going to put the sprint at a time, you know, where a large portion of your audience in these European races are going to be asleep, that is going to be a big problem with your viewership. Cause I'm going to start having to wake up at two o'clock in the morning for this when, when I'm running a summer camp is going to be real fun for me. Um, but I'm not going to like it. And a lot of, you know, fans aren't as dedicated and ridiculous as I am, which I, you know, I, I, I understand I'm outside of the norm. Um, but I do think that the current placement in the, you know, calendar of the sprint weekend is a problem. No, it is the the slot that they've given the sprint basically makes it irrelevant for the, I'm not going to say fair weather fan, but being not as dedicated as Catherine fan. Right. Which I understand that I am, you know, compared to most fans, overly dedicated. And, you know, I also tend to, you know, schedule my life around most sports. I'm, you know, if I'm not watching sports, I mean, I'm probably watching a procedural rerun, but I'm probably watching sports. Like right, right. now I have NCAA softball coverage on the TV behind my computer. So, you know, I, I understand that, you know, it's abnormal, but if you're really going to be focusing on, we want sprints, sprints are great, woohoo sprints, then that's not a good time to have them on Saturday mornings. No, I completely agree. I think, and I think that's why the 2021 format worked so well is because they threw FP2 in there and that's like a free practice, right? Doesn't really mean much for the weekend in general. Um, And so having that in that time slot, it allowed, you know, I'm going to say the the F1 fan, not the like hardcore in your face fan, because like you and I, we watch all free practices depending on the time. Sometimes I record them, but I watch them later. Like I would say that's a dedicated fan very dedicated fan to the, you know, yeah. maybe more casual watcher of watching qualities and watching sprints and watching the Grand Prix, but not free practices. So when you add in that buffer, like, I don't think you're losing that many viewers because of the, that time slot. If you look at it now, we have two, like four big things to watch, right? Two qualities, yeah. two races. 2021, we only had three. And I would argue if you have that format, in 2024 your viewership's going to be about the same because I don't think a lot of people are going in like recording the sprint race it's just like oh this is what happened in the sprint because it's super irrelevant to the Grand Prix it's in a bad time slot I think they need to fix the timing if they're going to keep the current format like with two races and two qualities yeah yeah and and that's the the problem and you know, one of the biggest problems with like trying to fix the sprint format is you have to start with FP1. Like you can't just get them to the track and throw them in the car and go into qualifying. I mean, you don't want to cold you? open. You don't want to cold open quali. I mean, I think that would absolutely be awful and ridiculous and nobody would go for that. And like the driver's association would riot, but like, how like I just with FP1 having to be that first thing like you're really shoehorned into one you know four other time slots and you know three other time slots really because you have FP1 and the Grand Prix are spoken for so to speak yeah yeah Yeah. no I completely agree it's the it we've always talked about this it boils down to the sprint has to mean something for it to do well and have competitive racing and when you throw the sprint in a half of the world unwatchable time slot and you only give you know p1 eight points 
like, great, you're throwing some points at them, but they're only getting eight points. It's not competitive. It's not worth it. You're not get, going to get the best product out of the drivers. Yeah, and maybe you get a good product out of some of your drivers, but you're not getting it for all 20 drivers on the grid, um, which is something that I do think we we have been seeing even this season. And that's not even going into the fact that Williams has to be careful because up until Miami, they didn't have a backup bucket. Um, but I, I just, it's really hard to look at. I, I don't, I, you know, I have some alternatives that we'll talk about, but I don't think that there is a way to actually have a perfect sprint weekend format. I don't know. I think, I think 2021, the original was not bad. No, no. I, I think that it, it's one of the better options. Like you can live with having two practice sessions. Like FP2 is okay. Like you're, you're going to be fine if you have two practice sessions on a weekend. Right. Um, but yeah, I, I, I just keep going back to the fact that at least back then the sprint set the grid and it meant not something. Yeah. And not having that really just, you know, why bother going full out in the sprint? Like, yes, it's, it, it is really cool to have, you know, a short race where you don't have to worry about pit stop strategy. I don't have a problem with that. And I also do really like the way that they formatted sprint, the sprint qualifying sessions in 2024. And I think that they were also, it was formatted like this. Like I love SQ3 basically being a one lap shot attempt. I think that's yep. great, yep, but I, agree. I, I also, I just, I, I really want the sprint race to have an impact on Sunday. And that's something that we don't have. Yeah. Cause currently it has an impact to the standings, but there's no impact on Sunday. So it's too, I mean, it doesn't really have races. that much of an impact on, on the standings. Well, okay. technically in theory in there. Yeah, I know it could. In a situation of 2021 where Max and Lewis went into the final exactly. race of the year, even on points, every point matters, including the eight, eight through one that you get in the sprint. But honestly, I think that if we're going to talk about how many points that you should get out of the sprint, I think at minimum, it should be one through 10, like a regular race. Yeah, no, I agree. Well, and I, th- I mean, and again, going to the, the points change that could potentially be coming up, I think you go deeper we've always argued that the best fighting is probably between p9 and p13 p14 and like yeah make that fight even more competitive i don't know that's just oh that's a, that's a whole nother yeah. dm <laughs> episode yeah i mean to and to speak on that i think that if you finish the race you should get a point yeah i don't see anything i don't have a problem that. with that no i don't have a problem with that at all um so Let's talk about ways that we could maybe try to fix this. Yes. Well, and I just want to throw this out there because this is an option that we have talked about. Like, is it even fixable? Like, this is a, it's, I'm going to say brand new. It's only a few seasons old. Was this a fun experiment that we just scrap and get rid of them? Well, I, I don't think Stefano Domenicali is going to let that happen anytime soon. Um, I, I also, you know, if, if we're going to have to like, suffer through sprint weekends for the rest of the you know the sport um i i like that they're you know only six races of the 24 like i don't think that there should be more than that i mean they trialed it with three races for the first two seasons of it in 21 and 22 i'm good with six i don't think we need like you know as no matter how you know how much we you know end up grow you know having the sprint format grow on us um and you know learning to live with it i don't think it should be more than a quarter of the season yeah and and you don't think that they would just get rid of it? I at at this point I don't think so. I we're we're in the we're we're in the realm of, you know, we need something that's going to get more eyes on us for longer. And with that comes gimmicks and you know this this is the, right. Vegas is a gimmick. Miami was a gimmick until they got rid of those awkward intros and the sprint is part of the, you know, gimmicky clown show that they that the drivers have know, to endure as part think- of the sport as part of it like they want to keep the integrity of the racing and the racing good and when you just keep throwing in things that they have to do that really have no impact like yes there's a few points but it's not a huge impact like you're watering down and diluting the product i don't disagree with you i think i think someone in the room of the million people who have to approve things 
someone has voiced that concern. At least I would like them to think, I like to think that they have, but they're probably being vetoed. I understand that money wins out always. Yeah. I think if you add too many gimmicks, it doesn't work and it starts to fail. Yeah. So the answer might end up being at the end of this episode, there is no way to fix this other than, you know, getting rid of it and pretending that they've never existed. Um, But you know, let, and let's go into ways to fix this. Option one, let's just get rid of them. Formula One is 74 years old as of this season. They don't need gimmicks to make it more exciting. Like, Formula One has never been more exciting, and it's not because of the sprint format. Right, that's what I'm saying. Like, we should, we literally should just get rid of them. I know that we can't, mm-hmm. but I think it makes sense that we do. I yeah i mean then we we would be able to we would get to stop talking about this back and forth and running in circles if we did get rid of it um and then of course the other option is go you know go back to the 2021 format so you know the sprint actually matters like if this actually mattered that would be one thing and that would be like you know not only do you have you know a regular normal race race weekend but now you have a race weekend where it's like oh now we've got dinner time for bishop check But now you have a race weekend where it's like, oh, I've got another hurdle to continue, you know, doing, you know, being as as good as I am. Well, the thing that, like, I question is they had three races the first two seasons, which is fine. Then we expanded. Everyone hated 2023's format. So instead of, like, going back to the one that people didn't hate, they're like, oh, let's try something different. Like, which just makes me really think this is going like a continuous evolution and they're not gonna they'll never go back to the 2021 format even though that probably makes the most sense exactly and I think that's gonna be a problem that we're going to to see as we you know keep going with these alternate format ideas unless they like try to do something in the Concord agreement that's you know for 26 that saves all of us from having you know to endure more gimmicks which I think is something that Formula One should focus on instead of trying to limit the number of teams on the grid another option that you've brought up and I think it would be super interesting I think it would really shake up the weekend on how things would go but you could put everybody in the same car yeah I think this current format with a spec vehicle would actually cause some entertainment because then you have you know everybody in the same car going all out for 100 kilometers let's 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 see who who you know who's actually a who's actually a good driver and who's there on daddy's money no who's there on the on the wings of adrian newey um i i think (laughs) this would be really entertaining i think it would get really hard on the drivers though with having like one free practice and then a quali and then another you know thing in the spec car and then you'd have to go to a different car like i think that would really i'm no driver but i think that would really mess you up but i like this idea yeah and then you have cost cap considerations and then you have you know the amount of money that you have to spend building a third separate car even if it is the same car like is like is it an achievable option probably not would it be cool to see every driver driving the same car to really see you know who's who's good at what absolutely yeah i think it'd be interesting I'm not sure I have fully developed thoughts on this one yet. No, it's but it, it's I it's it, I think it's thrown in there because I, there there have been drivers I know uh, specifically Esteban Ocon is one of them that comes to mind who would be like I think that'd be pretty cool. Yeah, well, and then you also have like the reverse grid and everything like that. They just to try and make it more entertaining, but I don't know. And and to to talk about a reverse grid, I think that a reverse grid could be interesting. I know that a lot of drivers wouldn't like that because it's it the 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 issue with a reverse grid is you know people who are you know on purpose trying to you know tank their qualifying sessions so that they have a good a better starting position, but you know. And I also don't want to put this in gimmick territory because then I think that the reverse grid might be one of those things that puts you in gimmick territory. 
You could also argue that going to spec car puts it in gimmick territory as well. I mean, I think all of it is in gimmick territory, and we're just trying to make the best of it at this point. We're trying to make lemonade out of sour lemons. <laughs> we're trying to make lemonade out of apples, I think, is, is, <laughs> is what it is. Yes. Got my witch cackle. Uh, okay. And then I know, like, I've kind of talked about different options and stuff and a lot of uh, what we've talked about in sprints are aligned, mostly just getting rid of them. But you also came up with some alternatives that, like, aren't as widely discussed. And and I see we have notes. <laughs> we we do have notes. Um, okay. So hit me with the Let's first one. find the notes. So the first one is what I call 2021, but better question mark and it's it kind of takes the best of 2021 and the good that we've enjoyed so far in 2024 where friday is a practice day like normal you have fp1 you have fp2 and you live with it and then saturday you have sprint quality in the morning and then go into the sprint in the afternoon the sprint sets your grid for sunday and sunday you have your grand prix logical i so i like that sprint sets the grid for sunday like that's something i'm always on board with i just question the timing of qualifying but right now we have the sprint in that saturday early slot so adding sprint quality to that slot i guess gets us a little bit out of there but then you're still missing sprint quality potentially it, it would mean having to wake up early for sprint quality, which is why sprint quality is, you know, in the afternoon now, I, th- I think. But you still have the problem where, you know, Grand Prix qualifying is in the, the, the showcase spot on Saturday, you know, it, with, with, with the current format. And like, you know, nobody likes FP2, but I can live with FP2 and, you know, have a really exciting Saturday and a really exciting Sunday. Like, you know, I, as, you know, Formula One is obviously a sport where we have currently at most 24 weekends of the year where we have three days of action and then the rest of, you know, when, when, when formula one is off, formula one is off. Um, but I, I don't necessarily think you need three full days of stuff jammed in, in order to have a good race weekend. Oh, I completely agree. Like, did I love Miami and, and China? Yes. But I also, I would rather, like I early said earlier, I'd rather have qual- a quality product over quantity. Yeah, like, you know, I enjoyed, you know, Saudi Arabia wasn't terrible, and Saudi Arabia is not my favorite race of the year. Um, Bahrain was good. Australia was good. You know, it, it's it's not just, you know, everything has to have everything action happening every single, you know, every single day. I mean, you know, Saudi Arabia gave us Ali Behrman, and that was plenty exciting, too. No, I... And it did not give us Carlos Sainz appendix. Um, but <laughs> we lost that. We did lose that. Um, no, I, I think that makes sense. And logically, I can see it happening. I And like I said, I think this whole thing is going to be a trial and error process. I think they're they're happy with the format right now because it is all eyes all the time, constant go, 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 which I think, again, viewership, money, I think it's working. For yeah. Um, but what you proposed, I also think would bring eyes and be entertaining. Like, yes, Friday you have practices, but, you know, I think the product that you're getting on Saturday and Sunday would draw more than a di- diluted product that we that we have now right exactly and this format also doesn't give you the same park Fermi problems that you had in 2023 that led to for right. example the disqualifications of lewis and charles in cota um so that's that's another consideration and then my other option is called if we have to have 24 2024 but dot 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 um is and in th- this this part in this and I, I don't think that this idea is, is, you know, unreasonable because we have had situations where we've had extended practice sessions. So I say let's extend FP1 to 90 minutes to start. Oh, okay. Because they do lose out 
a practice session the way that the current format is. Well, right. Normal weekends, you have three practice sessions. In 2021 format, you had two practice sessions. So we're here kind of saying, like, let's, you know, split it, only have one, but it's 90 minutes. Yeah, it's 90 minutes, but then you're, you know, from a broadcast perspective and just like in a general being in the car perspective, you're really not adding as much time because sprint quality is so short. And, you know, even compared to regular quality, the time that you have in each sprint quality session is shorter. And I like that. I can live with, you know, the the sprint qualities. And then the other idea would be to switch um, Grand Prix quality to Friday alongside the extended FP1, and then you'd have sprint quality sprint in the afternoon um and I think that the you know there would be some probably be some park for my issues and considerations with that that you know I I think it would be you have to you know go into park for a for qualifying and then you have to go out of it for your sprint stuff and then go back into it for Grand Prix qualifying so I don't think you know from a park for my standpoint that would work um but it's even messy, just yeah. It, it does get messy there, but even if you just add, nine, you know, 30 more minutes of practice to FP1 in the current format, I do think that would help and make, make some improvements, um, especially if you have a situation where Charles Leclerc crashes in the first, you know, practice session that causes a red flag and then everybody's screwed. Right. No, 100%. No, I think both of those are, are valid alternatives. I think they're both realistic in their own way. Um, yeah. I just... I hate having full Saturdays feel insignificant like we did in 2023. You know what I mean? Right, right. Yeah, 2023 was just, I just didn't like it. And, you know, I I don't hate the idea of going. In 2024, we don't hate sprints as much. Because they changed the format. 2023, we wanted nothing to do with sprints. Nothing to so, do with it. So nothing. So they're trending in the right direction, but we're still not happy. <laughs> yeah, the, the real big problem with the current format is when we get to Europe and I'm running a summer camp and running on fumes and have to wake up at 2 o'clock in the morning to watch a sprint race before I can go back to sleep and then watch Quali at breakfast. Yeah, it's- which is obviously a a specific to Catherine type problem, um, and I know the answer is Catherine. You have an F one TV subscription. Just watch the sprint race in the office. But I'm like, I want that shit live. But also, you're not the only person in that situation. So, not a a you. I mean, also that Catherine situation. Um. So the other alternative Correct. that I just want to touch on a little bit that I've brought up previously that I don't think this would really help the situation but it could add more value and impact is add more sprint races and make their own sprint championship would it solve the current situation of sprint races being like necessary and they're not being a gimmick no but I think it would actually bring out better racing if there is a separate championship and they did like what happens in sprints doesn't go towards, you know, constructors or drivers. It goes only for a sprint championship. Those points don't get to bleed over into the, you know, full Grand Prix um, standings. It's its own little thing. I think it'd be really interesting to see how that would shake up because like in Miami, Danny scored way high. And then in the Grand Prix, he didn't, you know, some of these cars who maybe don't have the best, strategy or they don't have a good long-running car um I think it would be interesting to see if things shook were shaken up or shook up for for sprints and adding more sprints is it kind of yeah what yes but yes but I can I can also see a six race sprint championship that's just focused on you know sprints and I I like your idea of not allocating points to the driver standings if we're gonna if we're gonna go with that I I think that's that's the key here um but I just you know I don't know if these drivers necessarily need to be fighting for another championship within a championship no I I I agree. I don't know if it's going to do anything to improve, you know, the weekend, but I think it would be an interesting alternative. 
and you would see yes like and i'm just personally curious to see if it would completely reflect the drivers championship or if we would have a daniel ricardo up there and you know different drivers feather sorry <laughs> different drivers <laughs> up there that maybe aren't doing as well in the grand prix yeah, I I would love to see an opportunity for drivers that, you know, are in the mid pack, the bottom pack, you know, having some success. The problem is that some of that comes in the fact that they're just not in fast cars. And, you know, Danny's finally getting a handle on, you know, his his new chassis and not crashing and not having to deal with, you know, the, you know, effects of a penalty that he shouldn't have gotten but that's that's a discussion for our china recap so just watch that episode um but i i just i don't know about these goddamn sprints (laughs) that's where i I am our whole thing is like we will fix the sprints like we will figure this out i don't think but like we said i don't think there's truly an answer to this i think there's just like this is a throw shit at the wall and see what sticks situation of like, let's try this. Didn't yeah. Work. Let's change it a little bit. That didn't work. Let's improve a little bit. And like maybe in five, ten years, we'll have a good sprint product. But I don't, I don't think we found no, the, no. that se- that special sauce, the secret sauce to, to make it good. I, th- I think that the the only way to to really have a, a special sauce and to, to really, you know, actually figure out how to make a good sprint format is taking out the constraints that we currently have of the weekend format. And I I don't necessarily have, I haven't thought this through, but I think that the, if, if we want to have an actual good quality sprint event, then I don't think that it can be the same, you know, three day constraint that we currently have. And I know that for a lot of reasons, that's a very difficult thing to just change for six weekends out of your season. Um, But I, I do think that in order for formula one to have a, you know, good sprint offering, it would be a completely different weekend schedule compared to everything else. Yeah. Like why not start on Thursday for sprint weekends? Add another yeah, day in. Exactly. You're adding another race, so why can't you add another day? Yeah, exactly. So, you know, haven't, you know, fully thought through that, but I do think that the best opportunity for Formula One to, to have would be to, you know, let's figure out something different um, that isn't just this, what, ma'am? Sorry, I'm, I'm getting yelled at by the, the, the furball. Um, she she doesn't know the answer either is, is, what, I, is what I'm hearing, or she's seen a bird on the balcony i'm not it, it could it could be one or the other or probably both yeah uh, and then i i want to ask you you kind of threw in a wild card of an idea um good. at right before we we started recording so i want you what, what is what is your like last this, this this other suggestion here so i think if we want to like again throw shit at a wall and see what sticks and like see how entertaining this could be it would be super interesting to see if Formula One did what the F1 Academy does. So we talked about this on our last episode for, for Miami Recap, is that they do one qualifying session for two races. And you have your fastest time goes towards qualifying for one race, and your second fastest time goes for qualifying for their second race. So instead, it would be Grand Prix and Sprint. So there would only be one qualifying session, similar to 2021, but instead of the sprint setting the grid for the Grand Prix, you'd have one qualifying session to set both. So I think this would be really interesting. One, they'd have to fix the graphics and the fans would have to have better, you know, broadcasting of this because for F1 Academy, it's terrible. But I think this would make qualifying super, super interesting and you'd still get two practice sessions. So if we're not going to extend sprint weekends, I think this is a way to do it, getting rid of one qualifying session. And I don't know. I just think it would be interesting. And you wouldn't have, like, we would unfortunately get rid of, like, Q1, Q2, Q3, because otherwise people can't keep setting. Right. Times. So it would just be an open qualifying. But I think it would be super interesting. Yeah, I, I think I said in, in the F1 Academy uh, roundup that we did after in our, our Miami recap that I don't think that it would work for Formula One, but I think it would be interesting if they tried. 
Right. And this way, at least, like, the whole weekend's kind of tied together. Because, like we've been saying all episode, all since we've started this podcast, there's two separate weekends going on in one weekend you have sprint stuff and you have grand prix stuff if we had this uh, yeah. is kind of like a little bit closes the circle and gets it all to be together <laughs> maybe but, but i don't know i think it's you know i really think this is a throw shit at the wall and see what six kind of kind of situation i think it'd be interesting just to try something new like if we keep trying to change the formats let's just try everything at this point and then you know evaluate in a few years i don't know or evaluate at the end of the season because I think that we're going to have a completely different format in 2025. <laughs> I know. Honestly, I'm just waiting for them to come out with new regulations and how many sprints we'll have. Yeah. But final thoughts yeah. on this is that, unfortunately, we will not stop talking about this. Um, as much as we yep. want to cram everything into one episode, we will still have thoughts and feels. But I think if we don't go back to 2021, we have to just keep trying something new. Because I don't think the format that we have now is perfect, like you said. I don't know if we'll ever find something that's perfect. But I think there's enough ideas out there, especially since we came up with several our, ourselves or we've talked about several ourselves. Like, the big people making the big decisions have to have, you know, more ideas. So I'm ex- – I am – not excited but i am intrigued to see what is put forth for the 2025 season yeah i i really i i feel like we we talked in circles for 45 minutes which is kind of par for the course and i think is exactly what we expected out of this episode but i i i think that you know it's do we really need this do we really really need this here's the thing i don't know F1 was doing just fine for 70 years without them. Mic drop. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's kind of it. Well, up next, (laughs) we will have our Imola (laughs) predictions episode. Um, We are going back to Imola for the first time in two years. Imola was unfortunately canceled due to horrible flooding um, in the area last year. So this is the first time we will be racing there since 2022, which is really exciting. We will have that out for you guys next week. Thanks for sitting and, uh, you know, enduring the 45 minutes of sprint format talk with Catherine (laughs) and myself. And thanks for going off track with us, guys.